here with another full run Friday just got back from vacation um, last night yeah last night <laughs> Hit a lot of traffic and so this one is being rushed on a Friday afternoon because I wanted to get it done so as kind of get the ball rolling and keeping it going I've had three Fridays in a row this will be number four so if you like what you see please go back and uh, you know check out the other episodes this is me very low-key talking about full runs because I like to collect full runs of single issues. Um, I do read comics. I know it's easier to read digitally. I know it's easier to read in trade. I know it's cheaper. <laughs> I definitely know it's cheaper. But I actually enjoy the process of searching for issues, finding deals, making trades, buying and selling, digging, digging, digging. I love digging in back issue bins. Um, and so for me, the full run is kind of a... A thing that I aspire to and if you have that sort of feeling like you've got to do the same thing too you know what I'm talking about so today what we're talking about is ElfQuest uh, the full run of the original warp graphics series that started in I believe 1978 uh, went to about 1980 21 issues but it actually all started with this. So we can keep going back down the rabbit hole. Wendy Peeney, um, one half of the creators of ElfQuest, the artist, uh, was actually known on the um, cosplay circuit as a Red Sonia um, cosplayer who did um, almost like skits at, convention at conventions way before cosplay was a thing. Um, way before social media was a thing, before the internet was a thing. Like real, you know, do-it-yourself, low-key stuff, um, but became well-known for that. You can find videos on YouTube of, of her doing some of that, um, you know, 45 years ago, 50 years ago, which is awesome. Anyway, uh, she and her husband, Richard Peeney, who is the editor and the writer of ElfQuest, uh, had this idea for comic, ElfQuest, and they uh, got it published, issue one, by this company uh, that put out a magazine called Fantasy Quarterly. And they did not like the quality of it. If you look really closely at one eye up here, hopefully you can see that. Um, the blue over his pixelated hood, it just, the art looks terrible. The quality is not good. I've got a copy of this in RAW. <laughs> I couldn't find it. I, oh, it's up there. I'll get it at the end. Um, the pages are like newspaper thin. Um, they were just not happy with the quality that came out from their fantasy quarterly number one so being the peenies who had done you know like i said do it yourself cosplay way back before there were tutorials or 3d printers or anything um they started warp graphics wendy and richard peeny um and they put out their own comic uh their own elf quest under their own uh printing and this is what the first issue looked like. But art on the top of the first issue, this art is definitely different than the art in the rest of it. And you can see here this one's signed by Richard Wendy Peeney. Um, ElfQuest tells the story of Cutter and his tribe of wolf riders who all ride wolves. It's Night Runner there. And the fight they have to find a home after the humans burn down the forest. This is issue one, but this is the second printing. I don't have a first printing. Uh, first printing would be a dollar. It does not say on the Indica inside that this is a first or second printing. So it's really important to have um, a knowledge of, of the prices. And so dollar twenty-five is not first print. The other reason I'm taking this out of the bag is just to show this. Um, they did portraits on the back of each uh, of each issue, which is really, really, really cool. Um, I won't do that with all the issues because I want to make this one a little bit quicker, but they do have these portraits. So um, the humans burn down the forest. The wolf riders have to leave their home, the Holt, uh, which is like their forest hideaway. And they have to go to the only place they know that's safe, and that's the troll caves. And uh, the trolls and the elves have a precarious relationship. And the elves um, 
the, the elves get into the troll caves, but then the trolls lie about a new place they can go and send them out into the desert. And so the end of issue one, they're kind of in the desert. And they cross the desert for a couple days where their family is, or their, yeah, their people are dying, sunburned. They've never seen something like this before. It's a really cool geographical thing that you can go just through some troll caverns for a day and come from temperate forest to uh, desert, but that's okay. It serves the story. Uh, Cutter finds Lita and a tribe called the Sunfolk. He captures Lita, um, not out of any malice, but uh, he kind of just because they were out for themselves. They had no idea other elves existed, and they wanted to... Um, you know, have some bargaining in the process of dealing with this new group. So they were supposed to raid their village for water and stuff, but Cutter sees Lita and has a recognition, which is a thing where the elves fall in love with each other in, in, in a way. Um, it's deeper than love, but uh, I don't want to get too deep into it. So anyway, uh, they return Lita, they become friends with the Sunfolk, but then this guy up here, Rayek, uh, who is also in love with Lita, challenges Cutter to... Uh, the trial of the head, hand, and heart, um, which Cutter wins, right? And uh, then he's like, I win, I get you. And she's like, no, you don't get me. Um, but she also feels a strong pull towards him. She sneaks off and sees the wolf rider doing their howl, just like their celebration where they talk about the blood of 10 chiefs, the 10 chiefs that came before Cutter, or just nine chiefs that came before Cutter. Because No, the 10 chiefs, because he is the blood of 10 chiefs. So she hears that and realizes maybe she is in love with this strange, you know, pale-faced <laughs> elf from beyond. And, uh, yeah, they get together. So uh, here's an example of the dollar. A lot of these are second print because they're dollar twenty-five. So I really do need to find first prints on these. Um, the Zwoots attack, and the Sunfolk usually go to hide. But uh, that's not what they do. They um, The wolf riders don't hide. They go out and attack these Zwoots. They catch them for meat and for sport. They love the hunt, and it shocks the Sunfolk and all that sort of stuff. Um, in the meantime, Lita and time has passed. Lita and Cutter now have Ember and Skytop as their children. And we're up to issue, what are we up to? It's six here. And Suntop has some magical powers. Some of the elves do have magical powers like healing and stuff. Suntop can send and he can sense things. And he senses like uh, the tribal elder of the um, Sunfolk goes into a trance. And Suntop goes into her head and finds out there's an enemy somewhere. So Cutter and his best friend Skywise go back across the desert waste. And they get themselves into the troll. Uh, they, they get actually they climb the wall. They find some trolls living outside, um, and they uh, they get them. They get captured. Then they get them drunk, and they escape. And they get some more information. Uh, and then as they're going through the land, they come across these two humans, whom at first they attack, but then uh, one of them gets one of them is injured, and the humans are helping them. Side note, this is supposed to be Richard Peeney, and this is supposed to be Wendy Peeney, sort of likenesses of them. Um, and so they, they kind of go forward and uh, realize that all humans are evil. And they further go on their quest to find other elves and to find out what's happening to Suntop. And they are led towards this strange mountain um, with the lodestone, which I forgot to mention earlier. It's, it's complicated. You don't need to know. But they're led towards this mountain. And then other elves are going after them and trying to help them. Uh, Lita finds a skull and thinks it belongs to somebody that they know. We get introduced to Petalwing, who is this sort of fairy um, pixie creature, and they create cocoons that makes the elves sleep, um, kind of in a trance, uh, suspended animation sort of thing that they get out of that. And then um, we get to the mountain, and we find another of, a tribe of elves, uh, the elves of Blue Mountain, their leader being Winnowill, who is like the big bad evil, who's kind of like Negan. She keeps propping up in, cropping up in uh, Elf Quest, in Elf Quest Siege of Blue Mountain, in Elf Quest Kings of the Broken Wheel, like every subsequent Elf Quest story. By the way, forty years of Elf Quest stories. This is by no means like an exhaustive story. This is just the first twenty-one issues of the first part of a much larger quest. Um, but it's near and dear to my heart because I love this one. So we got Winnow Will there. She's the big bad. Um, a lot of these elves can fly, but they're all under the 
kind of spell of, of win a will and what she will and will not allow them to do. Um, there is a question here. What is the way? Um, do shine. Has recognition with, uh, actually, is that, yeah, with Tildak and the, the uh, that's Tildak there. Sorry, I love this artwork, by the way. The eyes becoming part of the wings or the shape of the wings. Um, Strongbow wants to leave. Uh, he's kind of like the old school wolf rider. He doesn't think that the wolf, the wolf riders are following the way anymore, which has to do with like forest and game and, um, and hunting and, and being true to themselves. He doesn't speak a lot. He's the, the strong silent type. He uses sending only, which is like telepathy. Um, and so this is really a battle. Uh, when a will finds out that, uh, Tildak is having a child with Dushine and like wants to capture her and use her and use Windkin, the, um, the, the child, you know, and there's battles and stuff. And then we find this, um, we find this, uh, secret that the first chief of the wolf riders to Maine was actually um transformed into a wolf to help save the wolf riders when they first arrived in this land you know millennia ago um and so the the wolf riders are actually descended from wolves not just from um elves which is what makes them unique and strong some people like Winnowill thinks it makes them unpure but uh you know they think it makes them, themselves strong she realizes a lot more light um I'm holding it like this. So I'm going to do this side. So here we go. Uh, we're more than halfway through now. Issue 13, we learn that secret. And then issue 14, uh, they try to save uh, save themselves from the, the capture of the, uh, I can't remember what they're called. They're not the go-backs. They're the, the winged elves of Blue Mountain. The elves of Blue Mountain is what I'm going to call their tribe. Um, you can see that Winnow Will has Suntop as a captive here. Um, so that it becomes kind of like a, an escape attempt through the mountain. Lord Vol, who uh, is under the um, under the spell of Winnowell, says he'll take the Wolf Riders out and show them other tribes and stuff. But he actually double crosses them because you know even though he's the titular leader, Winnowell is the one who's really in charge, and everybody does what she says. So the elves fall and are crashed and left out away from Blue Mountain and away from their uh, their kin. Um, but they do meet the Gobacks, who are another tribe of elves. And um, at first they fight with them, but then they um, fight against the trolls and uh, join with the Gobacks. This is the famous orgy scene. If you've ever heard about uh, ElfQuest, you might have heard of the famous orgy scene. It's not very explicit and it's pretty short. But it, uh, it, it was very sexually liberating for the time for a 1980 comic. You would not have seen that in Marvel. And indeed, when you look at the Marvel reprint, you do not see what you see in here. Um, there is, however, a gift of armor that they get as they're traveling through secret passageways to get back to actually um, bypass. Uh, I think it's to bypass Blue Mountain, but now I'm not even 100% positive. They're either bypassing or they're going in a secret way. The armor is a gift from Two Edge, who is the half-troll, half-elf half son of Winnowill, who we realize now is perpetuating a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff as a way of getting back at his mom. While Cutter and the rest of the elves are trying to um, get their way into uh, Blue Mountain and defeat Winnowill and, and all that jazz, some other trolls... Uh, try to attack the go-backs that are left. That includes the younger elves, the go-back kids, and Redlands. And there is a battle there that is quite heart-wrenching. Um, and then we get to the actual battle. You can see the four tribes here. The Wolf Riders, the Sun Folk, the go-back, and the Blue Mountain Elves. Um, and this kind of quest end brings it all together. The Wolf Riders defeat Winnowill, or at least hold her at bay. They get to go to the castle beyond Blue Mountain, which turns out to be the castle that they originally came from when they came from outer space or somewhere else um, that's explored in later series of ElfQuest to the world of two moons. And then we kind of get this wrap up issue here. Um, is this an actual issue or is it just a companion? I think it's an actual issue. We get a wrap up issue. Uh, where they learn one of the wolves that's been with them the whole time was actually Tamane, the original chiefess. 
um, and the shapeshifter, and uh, you realize there's more quests to happen, and then you're, after this you're going to get um, Siege of Blue Mountain, and then Kings of the Broken Wheel, and then lots and lots of other stuff. So this is the original quest, the original warp graphics um, printings of ElfQuest. One of my absolute favorite, favorite comics. This ranks up there with X-Men. I did first start reading the Marvel imprints when I was a kid. I saw it on the spinner rack at the stationery store, and I'm like, I got to read that. Fell in love with it. Found these, chased these down. Actually had the German versions when I was uh, in Switzerland. I found those. I fortunately sold them when I was poor and out of college. Um, needed to make some money, make some room, so I did sell those German editions, which is really um, annoying and lame. But I also have back here collected graphic novels. Um, I should hold two boxes of ElfQuest back there. Uh, I've backed their um, Kickstarter to do an audio movie. Um, there's been talk forever since I can remember about an ElfQuest movie. That has never happened, but they did the audio movie, which was really cool. And you can listen for free wherever you get podcasts. But the most important thing about ElfQuest as a comic, you know me, I love my full runs. But... If you just want to read a great, complete, far-reaching, accessible fantasy story, go to ElfQuest.com. They have made every single comic over the last 40 years, maybe with the exception of their recent license with Dark Horse, who put out their most recent um, stuff. I think they probably have hundreds of comics to read for free. You don't have to sign up for anything do not have to pay anything do not have to pay a single dime go to elfquest.com and just start reading and enjoy you will love it thank you very much this is tacoma comics full run fridays